I have already made two YouTube videos on river deltas. They are probably my favorite geographic feature. They are just so interesting how the river splits into many different sections and the different kind of fractal-like patterns they form. I just think that they are really cool. However, despite making two videos on these river deltas, I have barely scratched the surface on covering river deltas. So in today's video, let's explore two more types of river deltas and how they form. So the first one we are going to investigate is called an inverted delta. So an inverted river delta is a river delta where there is a river or a few rivers which form a river delta, but this river delta eventually links back up into one main stream which flows into the sea or ocean. And what we are looking at here is the Sacramento and San Joaquin River Delta. And so how did the Sacramento and San Joaquin River Delta form? Well, the entire Central Valley of California, this huge fertile region that we can see here, used to be a large inland sea. And eventually, this sea broke through the mountains here and formed the Carquina Strait, which is still the strait that flows into San Francisco Bay and eventually out to the Pacific Ocean. And over many years, this Central Valley completely drained into the Pacific Ocean and this whole drainage system was flowing into the Pacific Ocean at a time when sea levels were around 300 feet lower than they were today. This was around 10,000 years ago and was during the Ice Age. However, at the end of the last Ice Age, these sea levels began to rise, and this led to the San Francisco Bay and eventually all the way up into the Sassoon Bay to be slowly flooded, and this caused the flow of the Sacramento and San Joaquin Rivers to significantly slow down, and thus deposit sediment in this area, forming the large delta we see today. And this river delta was constantly changing due to the sea levels continually rising around one inch per year, but around 8,000 years ago, the sea levels settled to around where they are today, and this finally led to the modern day delta that we see today, where the Sacramento River and San Joaquin River now flow into the Sassoon Bay and the Carquinez Strait, and eventually flow into San Francisco Bay here. But now let's take a look at another example of an inverted river delta. This is the Inner Niger River Delta. And something very interesting about this river delta is that it is the first out of two river deltas on the Niger River. So the Niger River flows from its source in Guinea, northeast through the land, and here it forms an inland inverted river delta, but it continues going northeast and then cuts southeast where it'll eventually flow into the Gulf of Guinea down here in this pretty large river delta. And I think that the Niger River has to be the only river in the world that forms two river deltas, because the situation that needs to happen in order for two river deltas to form is crazy. You need an inland inverted river delta, like we have here. And so this river delta forms at the confluence between the Niger River and the Bani River, and the way that this river delta has formed is pretty simple. The Niger River at this point is barely decreasing in elevation. And so this causes the river to slow down and deposit sediment, which as you probably know, splits the river up into many different sections. And it's interesting because this river delta is split into two sections. The first one is down here, which is a large wetland ecosystem. But the second one is up here with many different streams, but it cuts through many sand dunes and forms these mesmerizing wavy branches of this river. And of course, as it is an inverted delta, all of these many streams that have formed in this area all eventually lead back into just one stream of this river. And I think that is so cool to see how many branches there are down here and yet it all comes back into one. But those are all the examples of an inverted river delta that I'm going to cover. There is another one that I was able to find, which is the Tagus River, but there's really not much information on that one. Now let's go to another type of delta. These are regressive deltas, and these are not actually river deltas because they form at the end of a gut, essentially a channel or a strait which just links the ocean to a lagoon. So this stream that we are seeing here, it just connects two bodies of water that are the same height, specifically the Baltic Sea and the Stetchen Lagoon. Now the way that these regressive deltas form is actually pretty interesting. So essentially what happens is strong waves from the ocean, either through strong winds that day or maybe a storm, gets pushed through this gut 
which causes sediment to be forced upstream. But eventually these strong waves subside, which causes the sediment to be deposited as well. And so this causes a delta-like structure to be here, despite there not being any flow direction. And these regressive deltas are much more common than the inverted deltas I mentioned before. They can essentially be found anywhere you find a lagoon. So another example is one very close by to the one we just examined, and it is found at the end of this pre rauer strom. And as you can see, this is much, much smaller as the one examined before. There is just a little bit of sediment here, but it is still a regressive delta. As you can see, the strait still moves around this sediment deposit here. Now, while I was not able to find any more confirmed examples of a regressive delta, there are still more examples if you look around. For example, right here at the western edge of the Seward Peninsula in Alaska. As you can see in this spot, there is a gut, a small opening from this lagoon to the ocean. And what has happened is the ocean has brought sediment into this area through the gut and deposited it here. And so this is an example of a regressive delta that I was able to find by looking for less than five minutes. And here, I just found another example. This is on the southern coast of Texas. And as you can see, a regressive delta is formed where Galveston Bay meets the Gulf. And again, sediment has been pushed up the gut, and these tiny islands have been created because of it. And so while this term, a regressive delta, is largely unknown, I mean, I was only able to find two examples that were specifically called regressive deltas, you can still find them all across Earth's surface where the ocean meets a lagoon. And I just think it is really interesting how there are still geographic terms that are more common than we think, but yet have hardly any information on them. But that is going to be all for today's video. If you learned something new, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have video suggestions, please comment them below. And I will see you guys in the next video.